Hello everyone, this is Jia Hui Yang from Sinobiological Beijing. Thanks the organizer for giving us this opportunity to talk about our work from Sinobiological. And also thanks all of you for attending today's talk. My talk today is about the generation of functional monoclonal antibodies by single B cell cloning. We will first discuss the technology platforms and later on, we will share some case studies by using this technology platform. Today's talk will be divided into four parts. Before we are getting into the single B cell platform and case studies, we will briefly go through the antibody discovery platforms and single cell sorting technologies. So first, I will start from the antibody discovery platforms. The antibody discovery is a very long process, starting from the immunization, antibody generation, screening for positive antibodies, and the expression purification of the antibodies for the future functional analysis. So each step contains multiple decisions you have to make before the experiment. For example, the immunization part for the antigen choices. There are plenty of antigen choices such as protein, peptides, and the DNAs, and the also cells. So what types of antigens for the immunization is one of the decisions you have to make before the antibody discovery. So for sinobiological, we prefer to use proteins as immunogens for antibody generation, particularly targeting for ELISA and the other functional applications such as neutralizations. So we have already set up several recombinant technology platforms to support antigen generations, including HDK293 cells, insect cells, E. coli, and yeast cells. But still, antigen generation is a very challenging step in because the antigens could be very low expression level or it can aggregate. It also forms insoluble parts. It can degrade it during the expression and purification stages. And later on, we probably can obtain a large amount of proteins which doesn't have the functional activities. So therefore, a lot of optimization process needs to be involved for even just antigen generation part. For some of the molecules, the protein is not easy to obtain. So there's some other ways for the non-protein immunogens for the antibody generations. Here are a couple examples, including cells, which could be the natural cells or the overexpression cells. And we can also immunize the animals with DNA, which contain the targeting sequences, or we can use viruses, which has the targeting sequences for immunization. So here are showing several molecules has been successfully generated by these types of antigens for the fax applications. After obtaining high quality antigens, we have to decide the immunization procedures, including the dosage, routes, adjuvants, and also the timelines. Here's one example. For example, if we want to generate some antibodies in a short period of time, we can choose the rapid immunization because the period of the rapid, rapid immunization it only takes about three to six weeks compared with the regular immunization process, which is about two to three months. So after we obtain a successful immunization, we can choose different antibody discovery platforms. So including the classical hybridoma process, or we can use the antibody library display to obtain antibodies. And also for today's talk, we'll definitely focusing on the B cell sorting ways. So then we move on to the single cell sorting technologies. 
So since the importance of the single cell analysis method has been widely recognized by scientific researchers, I will not get into too many details for this part. So here is a paper published in 2020 to analyze the single cell related research publications. So we can see from this chart here, the single cell research has been a rapidly growth areas from the 2000 to 2019. There are multiple well-established single cell isolation technologies. So such as we list here, the micro manipulator facts, which we'll talk about in details in the next few slides, immunopanning max, LMD and microfluidics. And there's also an increasing of novel technologies with greater accuracies and specificities are under development. For cyanobiological, we chose facts to isolate the single cells, which will be followed by antibody generation. So first, the obvious reason why we chose facts is that the equipment is easily available and accessible. But most importantly, facts is a high throughput technology and separate cells according to the expression of the target molecules. Meanwhile, the facts can also support excellent purity, which is over 98%. Then we can move to the introduction of the process for the single B cell cloning technology to support antibody discovery. So here is the workflow of single B cell antibody discovery in cyanobiological. We can immunize both mouse and rabbits to obtain the B cells and we can also obtain the B cells from infected uh, human beings or uh, healthy human beings. We will first isolate the sinocytes and the PBMC. By using the facts, we will be able to sort in single B cells. So these types of single B cells could be IgG positive single B cells, but it could also be the antigen specific B cells. So for the IgG positive B cells, single B cells, we'll first culture them in vitro for a couple of days in order to obtain a small population. Then we can assay the supernatant for binding to the target molecules and we will be identified the positive B cells. Then those B cells will move to the PCR stage. And we can also directly obtain the, the RNA from the single B cells and move to the PCR stage. So after the PCR stage, we'll be able to obtain the antibody sequences and move to the expression and purification of the full length antibodies. And then we can test the antibodies for functional assays. So there are several parts involved in the single B cell sorting. And this is the first key stage for this technology, the facts. So for mouse, there are available B cell markers such as CD19 antibodies available. So therefore we can easily isolate the single B cells. We can also use the IgG markers to select for the positive cells and use the IgM and the IgD to negatively select for the cells. In addition, we can use the antigens to obtain the antigen specific single B cells for the next step. But for the rabbit, there are few B cell markers are available. So we can only use the IgG, IgM markers to select for the IgG positive rabbit B cells followed by the antigen specific um, targeting. Another challenging part for this B cell discovery technology when we first try to set up this technology is 
how to culture B cell in vitro. So we try the feeder cells and we also do different combinations of cytokines to keep the proliferation of the B cells. In addition, we also need to add some other more stimulation components to support the cell viability. So after so many rounds of optimizations, we'll be able to culture the B cells in vitro to obtain a small population of the B cells for the future steps. So the other steps for the technology is the antigen gene amplification. So even though for the B cell culture, there is a small population of the B cells, but still the number of the B cell is still very low. Therefore, the antibody gene copies is at very low stage, is hard for the PCR steps. So for the single B cells, we can recognize that the RNA is definitely much lower than the population. So we use two rounds of PCR to obtain the antibody variable regions and clone the PCR fragments into the vector to obtain the full length antibodies for future expression and purification. So the last part of our talk, we want to show some results by using this single B cell cloning technology to, generating, to generate antibodies. So this is, the first, this is the first case study showing the TIGIT antibody discovery. I don't need to talk too much about TIGIT. This is a very important therapeutic target for monoclonal antibody and drugs. So I will just briefly go through the workflow for this antibody discovery. So first, we will we isolate the antigen-specific B cell sorting by using TIGIT recombinant proteins. We obtained 380 antigen-specific B cells. We directly do the RT-PCR and obtained 142 which we are paired sequences. After we express the anti antibodies and test for the ELISA positive binding to the TIGIT protein, we obtain 46 antibodies and the positive rate is about 32%. And then we move to further analysis, the competition assays also compared to positive controls. So finally, we obtained eight antibodies which show better competition activities compared to the two positive controls. The overall workflow for this antibody discovery after immunization is only about 26 days. The second case is the GIM3, TIM3 antibody discovery. For this antibody, we isolate 1,600 IgG positive B cell sorting, which is different from the previous case. And we culture this IgG positive B cells in vitro, select for the antigen specific wells by ELISA and obtain 200 and one wells showing antigen positive hit. And then we clone the antibodies and to do the antibody expression and then validate the antibodies. Finally, by the cell-based assay, we obtain five positive antibody clones, which shows close activity to the positive controls. We also test their affinity by octet. We can see that for this couple five clones, they are showing similar affinity close to the control and the affinity level is about 10 to the minus 10 to 10 to the minus 11 or 10 to the minus 12. The last case we want to share here is the spike neutralization antibodies as we all know, in 2020, there's COVID-19 pandemic 
going on for the whole world and is in the urgent need to develop the spike neutralization antibodies. The reason for that because spike is the key protein of the virus which binds to the ACE2 on the human cells for the virus entrance into the human cells. So therefore, if we can generate the neutralization antibodies targeting the spike, which will be able to blocking the interactions between spike on the viruses and the ACE2. So we immunize the animals with the spike proteins and isolate the IgG positive B cells for the future steps. We overall, we obtain 900 IgG positive B cells for the culturing and obtain 74 antigen positive wells. We test, we express the antibodies in HEK293 cells and purify them for further analysis. We obtained six clones, which has the binding affinity close to the 10 to the minus 11, which four of them are showing here. In addition, we test the antibody neutralization capability by the pseudo virus platform, and which is showing here for the results. The overall workflow after immunization for this spike neutralization antibody development is only about 30 days. So I'd like to summarize today's talk. So for Sinobiological, we set up a single B cell platform to support antibody discovery. This platform helped us to obtain high quality activity uh, antibodies as I show in the previous few slides. We can develop for, we can develop functional antibody candidates, including the therapeutic drug targets and the viral antigens. And most of the antibody we obtained can get can have picomolar affinities or nanomolar to picomolar affinity. And this procedure has high efficiency, including high throughput screening, and also the development time is much shorter than other platforms. So currently, Sinobiological R is able to use this B cell platform to obtain antibodies from mice, rabbits, and also human cells. So for the last slides, I just want to spend a few minutes talking about what is Sinobiological doing in biological research. So Sinobiological is a company producing proteins, antibodies. Currently, we have over 6,000 proteins available and 12,000 antibodies online for purchasing. In addition, we have more than 500 ELASA kits and 28,000 genes available. We are using our technology platforms, also supporting CL services to our customers. So from the drug screening to production and characterization. And last, Thanks for your time. I would like to answer questions.